Hello community. Today I want to talk about domain-specific NLP models, transformer models that have a very specific focus. So here we go. When I talk to my clients, I hear a lot of, I have a specific domain data set. I'm working in biomedical, in finance, in legal. I need some very specific systems. And the question I get asked, how can you train the system for a query system that I want in my company? But I'm sure that my words and my product names and my partners and my patents and my, I don't know, science, definitely is not in the general data set that common NLP models have been trained on. So can, can you build me something? Well, let's answer this. And when I tell them, well, there's a bird system and it has a vocabulary of 30,000 tokens in the general default case, of course, we can program higher values. They say, hey, but my specific corporate domain knowledge only already has, I don't know, 10,000 specific words. So this will not, this will not work at all. So beautiful. You have to tell them, calm down. Transformer models like BERT do not act on single words. Only we, we humans, we do. But machine code looks completely different. And then there is a rabbit hole if you have to do the explaining. And I would like to show you my simple way how to convince clients. So first I tell them, hey, when I prepare your domain specific data of your corporation, I have something, a tool, it's called a tokenizer, and he performs four tasks. There's a normalizer, a pre-tokenizer, the tokenizer model itself that I use, and number three will be the main point here. And then, of course, I have post-processing for the special tokens that I need for the attention masks, if I work with BERT models, transformer models, and so on. But let's have, and we have libraries. It's already some predefined structure that helps a lot of, let's see, at hugging phase. Now, focus on point number three, the tokenizer model. I have here for you two videos on my YouTube channel that I explain to you in detail how two different models of a tokenizer work. The first is byte pair encoding, BPE. This is the most common and a really powerful tool. And the second is for the bird structure, it's something called word piece model. Now the first one, byte pair encodings, it works by starting from the single characters in a word. Then they analyze this, they merge those together, the frequency based, and they create new tokens from the bottom up. And the advantage BPE has, it can build words it has never seen by using such multiple subword tokens. You need smaller vocabularies and you have a good chance that maybe you have no unknown tokens. This is, or this is why it's such a great system and I like to work a lot with BPE. Now, more or less completely the opposite path takes word piece. Word piece tries to build long words first, then they start to split those words in multiple sub word tokens. And it is completely different as you can see. If you have to choose, I would recommend in general, you go first with BPE. Okay, let you give me an example. It's always good to have an example. There are two words, three words. Quantum chromodynamic is one word from science. Quantum field theory also, of course, from theoretical physics. So the first tokenizer, BPE, how does it analyze this and what are the tokens they come up with? You can see it splits up quantum chromodynamics in four different tokens and quantum field theory in three different tokens. Great. Now, BERT makes it a little bit different. You see that here even the second token from BP Chrome is now split in CH and RAM. And also you see that theory, the last word here, is also split again in the T in 
THA. So you see, you have a complete different structure of your vocabulary where you have your token and the assigned numerical value to this. So choose wisely. Anyway, then your clients, and if your client demands a dedicated solution for their corporate and maybe secret domain data, great. I mean, they are not interested in general system that has been trained on billions of sentences, politics, news, economy, finance, whatever. If a client wants a dedicated NLP system, fast, narrowly focused only on their domain knowledge, efficient and performance oriented. So what are the steps? Normally I create an individual tokenizer from scratch. I train it on their corporate data with this tokenizer, I take a BERT model and I train it from scratch with this tokenizer on their corporate data. I do the same for the bioencoder and sentence transformer as BERT. And then I build a neural information retrieval system specific for the needs of the clients. Then you have the optimization of the cloud infrastructure. Maybe you hire an additional MNI engineering for this. But of course, you have to make sure that it, so both understand that the price for this very specific individual solution is four to five times higher than if I just code a general solution for a client. So keep this in mind. Now, if you want to learn more about Sentence Transformer and how to optimize them, I have a whole YouTube playlist you see here on my YouTube channel. You can see starting on the right side, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six videos just on training and preparing the data set for fine tuning a sentence transformer as bird in Python. And if you have the training set, I have another YouTube playlist with a lot of videos explaining in detail for you how to fine tune now the model, the system, how to do domain adaptation or the transfer of domain knowledge for your expert system. So you have a lot of videos, a lot of solutions where I show you the code, the theory and the application in detail. Let me point out four specific videos for you. Top you have, I show you the code, how to code in Python, in Python, PyTorch, uh, a semantic information retrieval system with sentence transformers. This is really some advanced neural information system. And there's a specific video I have here on my channel. And then a little bit easier if you want, if you fine tune as expert sentence transformer system you built already on a domain one, let's say it's mathematics, and you want to train it now on a second domain, let's say physics or chemistry or whatever you have, there's a specific video where I show you how to train expert on two knowledge domains. Now, it helps with the client, for the client, if you have a graphic visualization. There, I have a video for you, it's called UMAP, Parametric UMAP, where all our encoding of the sentence embedding vectors are in high dimensional vector space. And to bring this down from a 1000 dimensional vector space, a mathematical topological space, to a three dimensional visualization, you can show your client where you can see clustered topics, for example, you need a topological tool. And in this top right video, I show you how to use the topological tool of UMAP, how to code this, how to apply it to your sentences so you can have visualizations for your client. And the last video on the bottom right is if you want to go one step further. If you say, I don't just want to have visualizations, but I want to work with knowledge graphs. And I want to combine here the topic of sentence transformers, sentence embeddings in vector spaces and want to use this for a graph based data approach because maybe your client also has some knowledge graph applications this is the video for you 
if you want to use sentence transformers with graph structures, with heterogeneous graph data structure, and how you combine them to gain insight into corporate data you have never seen before. Ah, yeah, <laughs> last point. Chat GPT is now in December 2022 really trending. And a lot of people ask me, hey, with this, we don't need Google search anymore. We don't need information retrieval system. And the answer is no. Chat GPT is just an LLM, a large language model. And if you want to know about what is Chat GPT, what is Galactica, what is Bloom, what is Flan T5, what is the purpose of each model, how you can code it, how you can optimize the code, how you can tune the performance of those models, I have a specific playlist in my YouTube channel where I show you large language model given by each different company from OpenAI to Google, what they can do, how you can use it, what is their characteristic, what is the theory behind it, how it is built. But in general, do not just follow some trends because it's trendy, but I would like to provide some knowledge to those LLMs, what they are, how you can use them, what are they designed for, and that they have a very specific niche application. So this was the last slide. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit and I see you in my next video.